Good morning and welcome to day three of my transcontinental race 2023 race coverage. Let's over, head over to the race tracker and see what's been going on. And um, well, the first five riders have now reached the, the first checkpoint in Lavigno. Um, if I just bring up the leaderboard, we can see that Robin Gamperle was the first to arrive and Christoph Strasser was about 15 minutes um, after him so essentially they're, they're neck and neck 15 minutes at this stage of the race is absolutely nothing and it sounds like they um, they rode close together um, or pretty much within sight of each other for most uh, of yesterday over the, the parkour um, and up towards Lavigno. Uh, Florian Moreau he was a couple of hours further back followed by Marine de saint Exupéry. Um, he was he was a fair few hours back um, once he arrived but I think he stopped to sleep in St Moritz before climbing up to Lavigno so he um, so that that probably accounts for that and then Will Val Val's done about 10 hours behind um, so he's the fifth rider through um, so yeah the first first five through and then we've had some interesting developments um, coming out of Lavinia as well um, I, I will just touch on the uh, the women in the race as well so Jamie Wilson is is leading the women's race so she's she's sort of she's not at um, in Lavinia yet but she's there's a long basically a long drag up through some Moritz um, a couple of passes up to Lavinia but she's actually not the first woman on the road um, Sherry Cardona is in there somewhere ah, she's riding as a pair here uh, 34b in a so she's riding um, with uh, Giron and um, she's actually the first woman on the road. So she's doing a really fantastic ride as well. Um, so the onto the route, um, I've highlighted Robin and uh, Christoph's route. And as you can see, they, they kind of take different routes out of Lavigno. Um, if my, uh, if my follow my challenge page, it's been very unresponsive and slow today. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's a, there's quite a big diversion here between basically Robin and uh, Strasser. So Robin took this this northern route, um, and Christoph Strasser headed down to Bormio. Um, and it looks like Marin is taking the same route as Robin. Now just bear in mind that both Marin and Robin do live in Switzerland, and they've probably scouted this already. But there's only really, um, there's a couple of ways in and out of um, Lavinia. I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to head over to Riber GPS. Firstly, I'll just say thank you to Holy Fat who are supporting my coverage. They do these uh, cacao bars, um, really good. Slow release energy for endurance sports. Um, so yeah, you can have a look on their website. I'll put all the link below. Um, but I'm going to head over to Riber GPS. And so this is the route. I made up um, if I was riding from CP1, uh, where the riders have just been over to CP2. Now we'll focus, uh, we'll focus in on um, Lavinia at the moment. So I probably, well, originally I was thinking um, of heading straight down the mountain to Bormio. So you end up sort of going the main route out uh, and then heading over the Stelvio Pass. I'll just put it on Google Maps so it's a little bit clearer. Um, so yeah, down to Bormio and then up and over the Stelvio Pass. Um, hopefully you can see that on my screen. I'm, I'm having IT difficulties this morning, I'm afraid. I'll try that. I'm going to turn off Follow My Challenge. Basically, Follow My Challenge is uh, quite heavy on the old internet. There we go. It's um, <laughs> It really does slow things up. So. Uh, Christoph went down to Bormio. This is the route I'd plotted. So there's a couple of little climbs out of Lavigno um, and then up and over the Stelvio Pass. In actual fact, they've decided, uh, well, Christoph has gone over the Umbrail Pass, which is this little road that goes through here. So let me see if I can get the little Google man, um, put him on the Umbrail Pass. I've ridden over there myself. It's a beautiful pass and absolutely amazing descent down the other side. Just look at those switchbacks down the valley. Um, I'm not to be honest i didn't really factor in riding over the umbrella pass i suspect because you it's not quite as high as stelvio you lose a bit of climbing and also this is quite a long valley there's a lot of um cycle paths in there so i actually so the tcr in 2014 um actually 2013 as well the checkpoint the first ever tcr the checkpoint was on top of the stelvio i've got an interesting little story i'll tell you about that and michael uh, in a minute once we've finished discussing this um so I've ridden up here before. I, I basically, I would have plotted this mainly because I know the route, uh, but I suspect there's probably quite a bit more, a couple of hundred more meters climbing going up of the Stelvio, which is why the riders have gone round the other way there. Um, 
so once you get down the other side there's there's a lot of um there's there's kind of basically a big cycle path there's a lot of there's a train tracks so there's lots of uh vineyards and orchards up there um and you know this is the climb the way they would be going up so this is the climb up from from Bormio so Christoph would have done this this morning so this is from 2013 my probably my first ever bikepacking tra- trip um after dot watching the first TCR so that is uh that's going up this this side here um however the other the other guys have they've done in some interesting so they've cut across the back here now when you first look you can't really see much um but if we go on to the, the cycle route uh, overlay, we can see when it loads up that there is actually a little off-road pass here um, in between the lake and the peak here. Now I suspect what Marion and uh, Robin have done, they've basically taken the risk of riding off-road. You can see this green line here and they've, they've ridden a bit of off-road and picked up, I think it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the pass here, um, but basically it links up with the Umbrail Pass. So it's kind of like a big plateau at the top there. Um, I'm going to put heat maps on as well. So Robert GPS has this really good thing where they've got heat maps. Um, so you can see there's there's a route over here. This is probably what they would have taken up and over. And then they, they've met up with the road again. And essentially, this is the Umbrail Pass, the red line here, very popular. And they then picked it up and essentially saved themselves a good few hundred meters of climbing. Um, but the risk is riding off road. Um, there is a route here. If you see, you can actually. There's a road and there's a tunnel. But because uh, because of the tunnel, you can't actually cycle through there. So uh, let me find. Um, I've got a photo of the the the, the, the tunnel. Um, Basically, you need to get a bus through there. So there's a shuttle bus. Essentially, TCI, you've got to be under your own power, so you can't get on the shuttle bus to go through that tunnel. So I would suggest that local knowledge has meant that they they have cut through there um, and saved themselves a little bit of climbing. Um, again, I don't think it, it probably doesn't seem to have made much difference in the grand scheme of things. Christoph and Robin are, are pretty close together at the moment. Um, and then I think they're all going to end up on the same route. So down to uh, Murano, um, and then heading basically over towards um, Bolzano and then across towards the checkpoint. Now the checkpoint uh, is in Slovenia. There's not actually, there's about 300 miles. So I, I suspect they may well do the bulk of this and be at the checkpoint this evening. Um, and as you can see, it's, there's, there's a, basically there's an obvious valley. There's a long, long valley in there when it finally loads up for me. Um, yeah, there's there's a long valley in here. We'll put the, the Google terrain on. And when it loads up, I'll be able to show you a little bit more. Um, so yeah, you can see there's, there's you, get, you cut through, there's a bit of a drag up, up through here. And then you've got this long, long valley, which is, is kind of, there's a few little passes in there, but that's kind of the obvious route before cutting over um, in towards Crange and then onto the, the parkour. So we'll, we'll dig into the parkour more tomorrow when the riders hit it. But that's what I suspect is going to be happening today. Um, you know, they're, they're heading down towards Murano now, um, unless they go north and across. Um, but I suspect there'll be a bit more climbing that way. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it pans out um, as we go on. So yeah, that's that's what's that's what's going on in the race at the moment. I do I do have some updates. So this was from Ma- um, uh, from Marin yesterday about the first day or so of his race. So let's have a little, little listen to Marin, who's now in third place, and see what he says. Hey Josh, quick update from the TCR day two. Uh, climbing the first climb of the first parkour on San Bernardino and the sand pretty cool after this morning. It was crazy hell, raining, soaking wet, uh, but right now it's super beautiful, super cool. Uh, maybe some rain later, hopefully not too much. Uh, yesterday was a bit hard. Uh, I, I have stomach issues almost at every start of races and yesterday too. I uh, lost a bit of time, a bit of energy, but now I'm back on track properly. Yeah, and today is big mountain day, something like six passes. Uh, I guess at the end of the day there will be 
more than 6,000 elevation meters on the computer. Uh, so pretty tough for the legs, but really nice one. So cheers, Josh. So that was that was Marin. We uh, it sounds like he had a bit of a rough start, but he's he's in there. He's not too far back. Um, and yeah, this is where he stayed last night. So this is some some Moritz. Looks like the public toilets. Um, so he stopped before the um, heading up to Lavinia, as, as we already discussed. Uh, it just sounds like the weather's been terrible. So um, taking shelter at this stage in the warm. Um, you know, the great thing about sleeping in the toilet is a it's warm, it's dry. There's hand dryers, there's sinks, so you can have a bit of a wash, and there's toilets. So that's pretty much everything you need when you're when you're basically. Um, bikepacking across Europe. Uh, standards do drop significantly, it's fair to say. Um, so this was Robin as well. So it looks like he stayed uh, in a hotel in Lavigno. Again, it, the weather's been really cold. So at this early stage, it's not really worth the risk of, um, you know, just camping out and being miserable. You might as well stay in a hotel, look after yourself and then save some of that energy to push later. So let's hear what Robin had to say. Robby update number uno lot of climbing today <laughs> shared with Chris then uh, almost froze going down to Livigno but now I'm in a hotel room and going to sleep a lot again to have a good time tomorrow so yeah it sounds like he's sleeping a lot I think he, he learned a lot from mistakes last year maybe he pushed it a bit too hard last year so he seems to be well he's dropped back a bit off uh, Christoph despite been there at the checkpoint before him looks like he's about an hour or so down the road so i suspect he slept an extra hour um last night but you know nice and fresh now um and this was yesterday just the two of them um robbing ahead this is from christoph's account so it looks like um you know they, they were they were quite quite close together um, i won't play christoph's video because the wind noise is absolutely terrible but this is the kind of terrain they've been going through um again there they are sort of to and fro in the whole day um, and yeah it's going to be a good race uh, and this would be going up the Stelvia Pass this morning before he cut up over the Umbrail Pass um, let's have a little look at the official transcontinental race um, Instagram there's always some interesting stories on there and this is Jamie Wilson our first uh, well first, first solo woman obviously Sherry is ahead in a pair um, a little probably about an hour or two down the road um, but Jamie Wilson, yeah, she's got a good pedigree in these kind of races. Um, she's ridden around the world, uh, I think four years, just just travelling around, I believe. Um, and she's she's been third overall at GB Duro, um, you know, finished Highland Trail. So she's uh, she's she's pretty tough. So I think she'll probably be excelling in these these tougher mountain conditions. Um, but yeah, seems like she's doing well. Um, and Maria Holcroft is second. Um, but we'll see we'll see how things develop. I mean, it's still very early in the race. Um, so let's see how it goes. Um, and yeah, that's that's a pretty stunning photo, isn't it? Across the, the bridge there in the Alps. And let's see, there's a couple of other little things. Um, oh yeah, just the imagery from the checkpoint last night. So uh, Robin obviously was first in. This is from the official Transcontinental Race Instagram. So give those guys a follow. They do a really good podcast as well, um, which will probably, you can see them doing some interviews here. So I suspect you'll you'll hear what he's saying if you if you tune into that. Uh, so Robin was first to pass through CP1, closely followed by Christoph Strasser about 14 minutes later. So they're both planning to catch some sleep. Robin locally, Christoph in Bormio. Um, yeah, both riders reported a cold and rainy summit on the Bernier Pass. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see see how this develops over the next few days. Are these guys the runaway leaders, uh, or you know, there's some other riders further back, Florian Moreau, the Marins there, and Robert Muller. Um, both. Well, all three of them have got really, um, really good sort of credentials in this kind of riding, and the race is still long. They've they've done a, a really big old shift. I mean, the first thousand kilometres, so the first six hundred miles uh, in forty eight hours or so in the mountains as well. So that is some serious going. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see how it develops. I'll be back in the morning. Don't forget to give us a little subscribe if you're enjoying this and you don't want to miss out. And yeah, hopefully tomorrow they might be at the second checkpoint. So I'll update you in the morning. See you then.